Whenever we hear the word probability, we instantly think of rolling dice and or colored marbles. Real life is not about rolling dice or for that matter studying marbles of any color, be it red, green or blue. Real life is about real problems and real problems require real solutions, not dice and marbles. So if you want to know more about what probability distribution in real life is, you are in the right place. Hey there, welcome back to another video from my channel Learning Puree, a channel for applied learning. I'm Shreesh and on my channel you will get tips and tutorials to grow faster in your professional and personal life. So if you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel and click the notification bell to definitely know when a new video gets uploaded and do not leave it to probability. Watch this video till the end if you do not want to miss out on simple thumb rules or templates that I will share with you to make your life easier in understanding probability distribution in real life. Before we jump into probability distribution, let's quickly recap our understanding on two words, probability and distribution. Many events like weather, storms, stock market fluctuations and so on cannot be predicted with certainty. The best we can say about them is how likely are they to happen. We do this using the idea of probability. Whenever we hear the word probability, we instantly think of rolling dice and or colored marbles. Real life is not about rolling dice or for that matter studying marbles of any color, be it red, green or blue. Real life is about real problems and real problems require real solutions, not dice and marbles. Uh -huh. Marble and dice is definitely one thing that we are not doing in this video. Probability is simply how likely something is to happen. Whenever we are unsure about the outcome of an event, we can talk about the probabilities of certain outcomes. Mathematically put, probability of an event is the count of favorable outcomes for an event divided by the total number of favorable outcomes. And distribution is the possible values a variable can take and how frequently these values occur. Let's see what is happening with this car manufacturer. A car manufacturer, Tomota Cars, conducted a study in a region of a state. 300 households were chosen in such a way that they represented all the households in that state. The households were asked to state the number of cars owned by them. Following is the data represented in this table. The variable here is the number of cars owned by a household. The values taken by the variable range from zero cars to more than four cars. Number of households represent the frequency for each value of the variable. Going further, if these households represented the ownership of cars in all the households in a state, then we can safely say that the likelihood of the ownership of cars in that state is represented by the probability column like so. The probability is calculated by dividing the number of households owning a specific number of cars by the total number of households, that is 300. Obviously, it's physically difficult to interview each of these several million households in the state. So, we use probability. The probability column for the various values in the table depicts the probability distribution. Alright, so if this was not daunting enough for you, let's go to the next level of the game. The following table illustrates the number of coronavirus infections by age group reported in the state on April 26, 2020. The total number of cases reported till that day were 2,344. If this is representative of the population, then using the formula of a probability, we would have a probability distribution for the population like so. Here's a trick. Life becomes easier if you always plot it on a graph. If you plot the frequency distribution, you get a bar chart or something like a histogram. And if you plot the probability, you get the probability distribution plot or also called the probability mass function plot or PMF plot for short. Hope you've noticed how different they both look. So here's an important tip. To plot a discrete probability distribution, you need to identify first an event, second the possible values that the event can take and third the function that determines the relative probability that the discrete random variable is exactly equal to some value. For example, probability of owning over four cars is 0.02 or 2%. 
This function is also called as the probability mass function. Note, probability distribution function for a discrete variable is same as a probability mass function. Spoiler alert. This is not the end. What we saw in the earlier two examples is called discrete probability distribution. It is discrete since the random variable that is the number of cars owned or the bucketed age groups take on finite values. This means that we can also have a continuous probability distribution that is based on continuous variables. If you have seen this video over here on basic statistics, you would know that a continuous variable is one that has continuous values. The link to this video is posted in the description below and the info card somewhere above over here. All right, let's move on ahead. We all have a set of tube lights or bulbs in our homes. These tube lights or bulbs come with a lifetime or a lifespan rating. Bling Lights, a manufacturer for electric bulbs, as part of quality control process, tests the various bulbs that get manufactured over a time period for their lifespans till they become non-functional. In one such test, the manufacturer found out that the few thousand bulbs tested lasted on an average for 1000 hours with a standard deviation of 100 hours. To know more about mean and standard deviation, I would suggest that you watch these videos for which the link is posted in the description below and the info guards posted above somewhere over here. For simplicity's sake, let's take only a sample of 31 readings depicted in this table. The readings indicate the lifespan hours of the 31 bulbs tested. If we observe the table carefully, we will notice that unlike the earlier examples, the values here are in decimals as well. There would be several thousand bulbs not part of this sample that would have different set of infinite range of values for their lifespan. This indicates a continuous random variable and this calls for a continuous probability distribution. Before we move on ahead, a word of caution. Nerd alert. The most used continuous probability function is the normal distribution function. This is depicted by the following formula where y is the probability function of the random variable x. x is the normal random variable, in our case, the lifespan hours. Mu is the mean of lifespan hours for all the bulbs tested. Sigma is a standard deviation for the lifespan hours of all the bulbs tested. E is approximately equal to 2.72. Pi is approximately equal to 3.14. Let's take one such value that is 1190 from the table and replace each of the values in this equation. We get the probability which works out to be 0.000656. If we calculate the probabilities for the table, we get the following probability distribution. And when we plot them, this is what we get. Looks scarily familiar, right? Yes, this is the normal distribution or the infamous bell-shaped curve. It is a part of the family of many other continuous probability distributions. And no, this is not the only one. This was picked up only for the sake of simplicity. So to plot a continuous probability distribution, you need to identify one, an event, two, possible values the event can take, three, the mean variances, and in some special types of distributions, a number called the degrees of freedom of the values for the event. Degrees of freedom in short refers to the number of values involved in the calculation that have the freedom to vary. But we won't look at it right now. And the fourth one is the function that determines the probability distribution for the continuous random variable. This function is also called as the probability density function. The plot of a continuous probability distribution is also called as a probability density function or the PDF plot. Don't mistake it with the PDF document. It has nothing to do with it. So there you go. It does not matter if the variable has a single value, bucketed values or a range of values, as long as it satisfies the following three factors. That is, there is an event. There are possible values a random variable for the event can take. And a function to describe the probability distribution. You can always plot a probability distribution for almost anything. Simple, isn't it? So now that you've become a super champ in plotting probability distribution from real life scenarios, consider subscribing to this channel and remember to click this bell and not the probability curve. This way you will not miss any videos that I upload.
And oh yes, please do like the video so that YouTube can promote this video to help like-minded people to update their understanding on probability distribution as well. How cool, isn't it? Oh, this is not over yet. There is still some interesting stuff to know about. Now that we know about probability distribution, here is a quick comparison table of the properties of two types of probability distribution. As the name suggests, variable values for discrete probability distribution are discrete as against continuous for continuous probability distribution. Discrete probability function is called the probability mass function whilst continuous probability function is called the probability density function. For both distributions, all probabilities are positive. Any event in the distribution, let's say scoring between any two values A or B has a probability of happening between 0 and 1. For discrete distribution, graph resembles a point graph as against a curve for continuous distribution, something that we have seen earlier in this video. For discrete distribution, sum of all the probabilities which is represented by the summation function is 1. In continuous distribution, the sum of area under the curve which is represented by an integral is always 1. Discrete probability for an event equal to 0 is impossible. In continuous distribution, the probability for a specific value or a single point of the variable is always 0. Some well-known examples for discrete probability distribution are binomial, Bernoulli, Poisson and so on. Whilst some of the well-known examples for continuous probability distribution include normal, standard normal, chi-square or F distributions. If you've understood how the two types of probability distribution compare with each other, then here is an important tip. Probability distribution helps you gain a better and a different perspective on your data, especially related to the shape and the spread of your data for any event. Apart from a graphical understanding of the shape and spread of your data, we can also compute the probability of the event between certain values of the variable. We will discuss more about probability distribution in the next video. But you will not miss out on that video if you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell. If you liked the video so far, smash the like button and share it with your friends and acquaintances. To know more about calculating the spread of the data, you could watch this video over here. Till then, stay healthy and stay peaceful.